So um, I just want to make a few more acknowledgements and, and uh, mention a few people's names uh, because we received quite a few messages from other people who came to previous conferences and who couldn't make it to the, uh, the Pune uh, conference. Some of them are going to be in Delhi um, as well. So there were you know, a couple of messages from Kalyan Das and uh, uh, Santosh Dash as well, Rashmi Mahan, Satya Narayana uh, as well. So, you know, it's always good to have the support and thoughts uh, sent even at a, at a distance. I also want to mention that um, among the people who are um, presenters here and speakers, Nalini Pai is one of the contributors to the, uh, the Routledge volume. So you will find you know, there are some flyers um, out there and quite a few other members of the network uh, are part of, uh, are part of the, the book, Satya Narayana, Sikra Mukherjee, Rajkumar, um, Rashkumar Hans as well, and so it's all part of the, the network. One more mention I want to, I want to make uh, as well. There is one student from Montpellier who did the and she's one of my students, she's called April, she's there, please stand up. <laughs> so, uh, so she didn't have any funding for that conference, for this conference, so she came uh, you know, of her own, I mean, being reunited with India as well, uh, did a lot in her, you know, incentive and desire to come to this conference, and also because she, she's just uh, starting, in fact, uh, Masters 2 and the second level of the Masters, and Phil, in fact, and possibly a doctorate on Dalit women's writing, so she had to be here, and so thank you for her. So please talk to her, and uh, she'll be delighted. And it's actually accessible, uh, so it's the, the conversation between Vinod and Jen. It's accessible on YouTube, you, some of you um, may have seen it uh, already. And so he's also filming this conference and the one in Delhi. And so there will be some, uh, uh, some footage you know, and, and the film coming out of it. So this network, in fact, I mean, this is my transition also between literature and film, because this network has founded its specificity on the focus on Bandit literature. And this has been quite a surprise, in fact, for people who are used to a focus on Bandit studies. So speaking from you know, social sciences and political sciences angle, uh, so even though, of course, we cannot, we can never forget that Dalit literature has emerged from a very specific social, <coughs> political and religious um, context, I mean, our focus is definitely on the literatures and on the politics that is actually performed in the, on, in the literary text uh, as well. And by text, we include film and literature. Mm -hmm. And so this would be uh, my transition to this, um, uh, to this session. Um, and so it's already the third time uh, I have the, the pleasure and the privilege of introducing Jay and Chayan. And so of course you could think that the pleasure has worn off, but of course it hasn't. Uh, so the first time was in Montpellier in France, and the second time was in Norwich in the UK at one of the conferences uh, on the series. So each time he gave talks and showed his first feature film, Papilio Buddha which a lot of people, which has become, you know, a kind of um, mythic film because so many people have heard about it even if they haven't seen it. Even if they haven't seen it, you know, sometimes they feel authorized to talk about it, but that's another question. Um, so we are lucky enough that Jane has accepted our invitation to come to Pune. And so, of course, you now know that he's a filmmaker, that he, he was born in Kerala, educated in the U.S. Uh, so with a being in film and creative writing from Hunter College, an MFA from uh, CUNY, so in, uh, in New York. And maybe you will also know that he shot several experimental documentaries and narrative shorts 
His films have been screened you know, all over the place and uh, at many festivals like uh, Berlin International Film Festival, BFI, London Lesbian Gay Festival, Montreal, and so many other places, including India, even though um, his first feature film, Papila Buddha, has not been uh, granted you know, authorization by the, uh, the censor boards. So um, he has also published, I mean, you shouldn't forget that he's also a poet, and uh, this shows in, in quite a few of his films. So he has published four award-winning volumes of poetry um, in Malayalam. Uh, Papila Buddha, Buddha was his first feature film and was the primary reason for Jayant being invited to the UK and to Montpellier in the other, in the previous uh, conferences. So the timing is particularly good this time because he has finished the shooting and post-production of his second feature film, Carved Escapes. So it is not out there, so you are the privileged among the happy few, you know, who will uh, be able to hear Jayan talk about his second uh, feature film, so Carved Escapes. It's on the agenda of this conference, particularly the Pune conference, uh, through the call for papers, yet we received zero proposal um, on relating to, to the, the topic. It's not even that we didn't select the proposals. We didn't receive any. So this is, you know, this should also be part of the, of the conversation. Uh, so as if the, the issue wasn't an issue and uh, as if they could only be heteronormative um, narratives. So Jan will definitely help us address these questions and most probably offer of real life figures and feature film figures. And so crossing, I mean deliberately crossing the boundaries between genres and uh, real life you know, figures and fiction um, figures. So, and, and also of course crossing the boundaries between the documentary and the fictional um, angle. So this is a constant, I mean in Shape of the Shapeless, the documentary, that is not happening in India, but in, 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 uh, in the US. Papilya Buddha, from the, the focus on the Kalan uh, figure, and of course Kappa escapes, but he will probably say a lot about that. So maybe uh, we could start with this first you know, aspect, because it is one that may help introduce, in fact, the three films that you're going to talk about here. Uh, so there is a kind of you know, red thread that runs in your in your films and um, so the character in the documentary Shape of the Shapeless, Kalim Pokudan, and then this continuation and this following up, uh, in fact, onto the activist group that is part of the um, part of the second film, second feature film. So maybe we could start with this and and, and then you know carry on um, forward. So. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Nicole and uh, Judith, and um, for inviting me. And I'm very happy to see you uh, all. And uh, as Judith uh, put it, uh, we are focusing on the queer element of the film. First, I'll show a um, few clips from a trailer and a few clips from Papilio uh, which is um, more kind of um, sexual, gender fluid uh, scenes and uh, uh, they asked me to find uh, clips with the less violence and, and uh, so last night I was like cruising through my timeline to uh, find some some happy scenes <laughs> I mean um, I show short clips and after that uh, we will talk about that then I will show um, my clips from the new film, second film, which is um, uh, shot in Kerala, just uh, finished the post-production and uh, it's not released anywhere. Uh, and um, I will show the teaser and a few clips from it. It's uh, based on, uh, it, it is based on three um, young people um, to uh, one a rural kabaddi player uh, who is brought up in a very conservative Hindu um, background and who fall in love with uh, a gay painter uh, who is exclusively focusing on male body uh, painting and also their common friend uh, Sia who is uh, a girl who is um, an activist 
and also um, who started, initiated uh, this napkin uh, movement in Canada. Her name is Nazira, uh, who was expelled from one of the public transport bus uh, in Canada because the Ayapa, the, the, the pilgrims go to uh, Shabirimala, was the male pilgrims go to Shabirimala, are in the bus, and she kicked out of the bus and a few clips from Papiri uh, Bhutan. Have plenty of time to do that. <laughs> area there was um, in a factory um, about I think last year it, it has it happened um, a female supervisor forced um, the user power to to strip all the female employees uh, in at the factory to check who is uh, who have menstruation because they found a napkin in toilet seat or something uh, it was a uh, it was in the news and uh, you all know properly uh, about that event. And just uh, uh, one clip from the movie, uh, it's related to that how bleeding females being treated in workspace. Sir, sir, what is it? 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 Sir, you are not a sir. You are a sir. sir. You are sir. You are not a 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 sir
clips which is dealing with uh, sexuality and gender uh, in all three, these three films uh, and uh, we will discuss it later. Yes, as you could tell there are so many issues these, um, all these clips raise and I um, feel like we're running out of time and we definitely want to give you a chance to ask questions as well. So I. I just want to reduce all my questions that I discussed last night for, <laughs> for several hours to one question because JM refers to himself as a caste queer and I'd like to ask him to talk about, you know, elaborate on this idea of caste queerness. Uh, it's just uh, 
Definitely cast queer. I am a gender queer too. Even though I have a penis, a piece of meat in between my legs, that does mean I'm a man. Or um, is, but vagina doesn't mean that a person is female. I think ma masculinity and feminine are a political construct. It is really, uh, it's like whiteness. Uh, skin of um, skin color of a person don't make uh, a person white. Uh, the mentality of whiteness and all kind of this. Uh, if you can be a racial queer, gender queer, sexual queer, then you can be a caste queer too. But it is not a queer caste, and it's going to be a problem. And the caste system itself intrinsically oppressive, and it has on based on this exclusion and pollution and uh, and uh, the, the and hierarchy. Uh, it is a tool of oppression. And uh, I referred myself as a caste queer uh, means uh, they are, uh, not I am propagating a new caste or anything. Uh, as being a gender queer, as being a sexual queer, uh, just being a caste queer. I think we've had the privilege of asking Jayan so many questions last night, so we'd really like you to have a chance to ask if you, if you wish. Or you want to stand? I don't think that. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> so very impressive. Um, when Papilio Buddha uh, developed a character based on Kalan Pokuden, and we all know he's a Dalit activist and environmental crusader and uh, he's part of Kerala history and being uh, that kind of several, several Pokudans uh, give uh, their life to what Kerala is right now and uh, uh, the character in the film he's playing himself but as a fixed, fictionalized form of him and, uh, and also there is another character, the girl Manjushri she is also based on several people lived there and she that, that's acted by an actor. But even though it's a non-fictional, real-life documentary subject we are based on, uh, I'm, I have uh, an imperative uh, to pushing myself into all, all characters. So it's not only um, I'm trying to make the, the, the fiction, non-fiction, Boundaries blur. At the same time, so I'm telling my story too. So, what made me to do these things? That's all I do. That's all I know. Uh, I keep on doing it. That's it. John Corey, uh, and a person who is transgressing these boundaries in his day-to-day -day life. And the daytime, he is John Corey running a business in Seventh Avenue and Broadway. Uh, uh, 27th Street and Broadway um, in New York and he's running an architect architectural uh, woodworking workshop uh, I mean a workshop and he has employees uh, he he's an employer and several people working for him running a business under the name John Corey evening he is running a meditation center he's a hermit, he's a monk uh, his name is Prematas and he's a real person Late night, he is, she is Rosu, who is a burlesque performer. Go around in the underground um, venues of New York, um, especially burlesque venues. She's very popular. She's very popular even internationally. She plays at London now uh, at Vox in Soho. And she is a person, I'm telling her story. I'm not really picking, looking for her muscles or anything. As a particular person, can explain uh, a very interesting life and you can apply the performativity theory or whatever you want to apply but she is a person who is living her life she is not confirmed to male or female she is not considered as a transgender either so uh, I'm just telling the story of a person who is living around me and so I know Rose for long long years I know Rose since 98 I start to make this film 2008, 
Uh, I mean, shoot, started shooting in 2006 and finished in 2010. And also, um, the other uh, characters are there. I'm not creating them. They are, uh, they are living around me 24-7. I'm just uh, finding them, telling their story. But telling their story my own way. I am retelling the story. Then I am putting myself myself also, I am injecting myself also to my current time and history. That's all I am doing. So I am not really looking for any size, muscles or anything. That is not bad either, you know. So I, I love it all. <laughs> Very nice question. Uh, thank you for that question. And the people say, uh, when the scene in Papilya Buddha, uh, the rape scene, the horror of it, I was focusing on that wild virility and uh, that masculinity that is uh, intrinsically violent when it comes to rape. It is, it is nothing to do with sexuality. That is power, that is brutal, that is invasion. And I was, that, uh, that film I was focusing on that, uh, the horror of the rape, uh, which is nothing to, uh, I, I have no intention to sensationalize. Then we are living in India and talking about we are comparing to Bandit Kuhn, Shehar Kapoor's movie. You are coming compared to day-to-day to day life, man. Every single minute girls are raped here in Kerala yesterday. Two girls raped by four men. A two girls, one is ninth grader, other is tenth grader. And tie up their uh, hands with their salwar, salwar shawl and brutally raped four of them in Kerala yesterday and it's happening right now we are talking a girl is being raped if it's a Dalit girl or middle class girl or OPC girl whatever girl so being raped the India is like a like America we call a fast food nation the rape is happening all around the world in America in London uh, in France all over rape is happening all over is happening, this horror happening. I'm very being shamed. Call myself a man. I hate the dick. That's what we call that we walking around so-called masculinity. Or what we are doing, that is a, the biggest political gesture that we are doing uh, in India. And actually we don't have to compare this horror uh, to um, to Shehar Kapoor's movie or, or any other. Every moment is happening all around us. And uh, I'm trying to um, tell the story. I'm not, pro probably it is politically incorrect. I'm not being afraid of politically incorrect. And uh, second question, you, you're yes. talking about uh, caste queer, that I explained that, you know. Um, so, just being gender queer, not confirm to any particular norms which is existing around us. Just uh, rebelling against it, just uh, ignoring it, just uh, uh, not validating it. Uh, that is, that, that's totally mean, uh, I, I meant caste queer. Yeah, for people who don't know, um, just just one, one short, very short remark, for people who don't know, I mean when the, uh, the film was censored, uh, the rape scene was not actually censored, it was not, you know, cut, I mean, we were not asked to remove it, but to shorten it. So, what was problematic was the length of it, not the rape scene in itself, which I thought was... Very and, the, and the screaming and, of course, sound, yeah, building into it. And yeah. uh, they can rape and they can enjoy rape and our uh, national TV or our, our judges can come uh, out and talk about uh, uh, the, a girl, a rape victim of Kerala, the so-called Surya Nelli Panguti, the girl from Surya Nelli. The accused rapist was the deputy speaker of India in, in Rajya Sabha, PJ Kurian, we know that. And actually about 50 men, 40 days, carry her in about 30 cities of uh, Kerala and raped this little girl, 8th grader. Then eighth grader mentally challenged a girl, and she not in thirty years now they are fighting cases, and none of the major uh, perpetrators didn't uh, never get 
punishment and it is still going on, still lingering around us. And uh, that actually that is happening in Kerala, uh, in, in India and everywhere in our neighborhood. Unless you scream, you don't scream. Okay, so last question. Okay, uh, my question is, uh, I mean, uh, there is this discussion on uh, documentaries, docufiction, and feature films. The differences, the, the supposed differences that we should have or we should maintain. That's one thing. And again, the representation of Dalit bodies in films. So when we look at a film like Papilio Buddha, we do have um, an intersection of several kinds of these things. As opposed to say, uh, mainstream feature films, I'm, 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 but the understanding of you know, gender struggle and all kinds of such things and again a regional space like Kerala which claims to have a particular kind of model and modernity and literacy and things like that. So how do you deal with it? Like uh, as a director, what would be your, uh, I mean, what's your desire in making a film of this sort, taking into consideration all these things? Actually, uh, uh, short answer is, it is what is my desire and it is what is, why I am doing this. All right, whatever, whatever you say, it's all right and all, uh, it is all correct. So my desire is kind of, uh, Marco de Sarve once uh, says that uh, it is uh, a constant erection. I have to ejaculate. That's it. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. And I think, um, I don't know, Anika, will you say something or? There needs to be um, an announcement. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and um, thank you for listening to me. And, uh, you are all wonderful people and scholars and just uh, uh, giving a dumb storytellers like us um, have an opportunity to address you. This is kind of amazing. Thank you very much.